Hello and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV. It's Postman Fan, the only West Ham United Postman Fan show on the internet, which has come back from the London Stadium. It was West Ham 3, Nottingham Forest 2. And I've got to say, I don't think that was very deserved. I wasn't expecting that. You made no, the jump. jump. Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't well, say it wasn't me. I think we deserved to win on the balance. I don't think so. I, I just think it wasn't... It was a really tough performance. We made hard work of it. The things I, we started really well. Yeah. Then, then we stopped doing the things that got us into the, the league. Yeah, I mean... A draw yeah. probably would have been a fair result. Yeah, we come out, of the, come out of the traps and score straight away. I mean, great finish, a mistake from them. We it picked was, it up. It was depressing. Yeah. The depress that the, the, got us the bolt. Yeah, the, but after that, we stopped, we stopped pressing. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't understand it. I, I, the thing is, <coughs> and I'm going to say this early on so we can get sort of like into the meat and bones of it. Hmm. We're struggling to create chances. And we seem that there's four players, right? They seem to be half a yard off the pace. I, I think what it is, and, and it showed today, and it's been shown over the last few weeks, is that when we get that ball in the middle, because Paquetar's now out on the left, and you've got Kudas that drifts out on the right, there's no one coming in the middle to receive that ball. Yeah, and not to find space. Yeah. And, and, and that's the one thing we're lacking. I mean, yeah, well, well, players will drop him. Yeah, then pick, but then there's there's nothing. Well, he's so deep anyway. Like, they just got to go wide because you, you two danger men are out wide now. Yeah, it was weird. Bowen in the first half. I read somewhere that he had five touches in the first half, and you know, obviously, which then really came alive in the second. But yeah, we, we didn't really get yeah, into it. It was almost like we went one nil up, stopped pressing, then we just, we just sort of sat off, let him have a couple of opportunities. I mean, that's safe from Ariola. Mm. That was quality mm. safe, but then. It was almost like we were just trying to see the half out one nil get to half time. Yeah. Obviously, thing is, like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Forest ain't no mugs, you know. No, they're coming off the back of a good result. Say. They beat Villa last week, yeah. and Villa are, are, are a tough team. We know that. It's their away record yeah. that is poor. Really. But they were there for the taking. You can see that they were sitting back, and for me, they looked like they come here for the point. Yeah. But then, once they knew the way we were setting up, the way we were playing, they're they in there, and they're thinking we can get three points here. But I, I thought they were uh, quite a tidy side. <laughs> I, th I think first off, I was looking. I thought, even when they saw, it, I thought, you know, they haven't created anything. No. They didn't really threatened. But at all, apart from that one save that yeah. Ariola made. But then we haven't made that. Apart from picking the ball out the back of the net, their keeper didn't really have to do anything the first half. No, that's the problem with that. And we don't test keepers enough. That's yeah. our problem. I, I, I think it was a performance that was lacking inspiration. I really do. I think it was. You know, I, 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 I thought we was much better second half, which I was. Yeah. Mm. But again, once, once we went behind, I, 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 I don't think. I think this is the, the problem, and I think this is I think it's instilled in the side. I, I think Moyes is, you know, really instilled it right. And I've got a little bit sad Moyes later, but it, we just don't seem to go for the jugular. You know, we don't we don't punish when we're on top. No, other teams would have killed Forest yeah, off after yes. going up that early. But sometimes you think, is it have we scored too early? You know, it's one of the, we're not that sort of team. Yeah, like if 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 the, you see it over the last few weeks with Manchester City, they go one nil up after about 10, 15 minutes, twenty minutes they're two nil up, then they're three nil up, then it's game over. Mm. Then they end up winning the game five or six. That's the difference. And I'm not comparing us to Man City of course I ain't, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of teams in this league would press keep, would press, press and keep press. doing it. But we just seem to Open up, nothing in the middle, and we, it's all out wide. Yeah. But the, the thing, the way you got to, I mean, Forrest would have come in with a game plan. To go beyond that early on, you, your game plan's out the window, it changes. Well, so they're going to be on the back foot, but we didn't take advantage of it. Never seen, we never, never seem to like. It's like the UFC. Mm. You know when you sometimes you get, you get that knockout punch mm. and they're on them again to make sure they're finished? Mm. We get that knockout punch yeah. and then stand back and think, well, well I, 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 I've just done. Let you know what I mean? Like, get up, you know. You know, we, we just don't think, right? you know, we don't, seem to, we don't seem to, like, really, really press. Not ruthless and go, enough. Not ruthless, mm. no. And, uh, look, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, <coughs> I, know, I, I know we won today. I'm getting a, a, a very... I'm getting a bit worried about the lack of opportunities that we've we're creating and finishing in open play. I think we've been unlucky today. You look at some of the chances. I mean, Suchet did the crossbar. You know, he had another chance just after that. They keep you know, some very yeah, their saves. keeper pulled off some good saves. So on another day, it could have been four or five here today. But, but again, we only come alive after we've gone 2-1 down. Mm. They, I mean, they had some good chances in the second half as well. We got to the point where it started to get a bit end to that, end. That one early on, didn't I? Like what me and you said, when we went when we one new up, and then we had that other chance when Paquetar, um, he shot. But 
as I said to you, I can't remember who played the ball now. I can't, I can't remember who it was. Kudus. But was it Kudus? But Kudus, he under-hit that pass because <laughs> he should have hit that where Paqueta don't even need to take he a needs, touch. He, he needs to hit it first time. Yeah. But because he hasn't, he's under-hit it, Paqueta's got to take that touch. And when he takes that touch, two, three defenders are around him. Mm. So it's little, mm. it's fine margins. I, I look at it, I wonder if... Uh, like yeah, Joe, I'm wondering if Zuma was tired, I was going to say. Because he, he looked like... I don't know if we've rushed him back at all because I look at that first goal when I watched it back and it, he was awful for that first goal. When you look at it, he was the, fur, the furthest back in terms of closer mm. to the keeper. You look at by the time their player gets a, to the goal, he's the furthest behind. So you've got that much of a head start on the player all of a sudden and then he slightly just gave up and accepted. So Ariola pulls off that great save mm. and now they've got another player in there for the follow up, following tapping where he's just sort of gone like... Right. Mm. What was the... What were they checking on the VAR? I did, oh, it couldn't have been for offside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it couldn't have been for an offside. Well, yeah, the fact yeah. that basically in, that, in the build up, Suchek loses the ball or whatever goes down and then Kudus tries to recover it but obviously Suchek's in the way and then they're, they're looking for a foul or something. No, right. I, I thought, thought it was going to have been offside. So. Nah, no, I think it was a foul in the build-up. But no. yeah, I thought that was... Uh, Gwed, obviously, as well, they was right back and for some, like, some reason, they just they were so slow to, to, to get back. And Another poor it, referee I today, I thought. Yeah, poor referee. But one thing, yeah. I, like you said about Gwed, his passing today was unreal. Yeah. Knocking it out wide, you know, he's yeah, cross field passes, yeah. passes. He's, he's good at that. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really good he's at got, that. He's good at that in his locker. And and, and one thing, I, when I see Zuma alongside him today, I had a little bit of confidence in, in him today because I think he plays better alongside Zuma. Um, it was good to see Zuma back as well. He's yeah. um, He is a presence and, you know, winning their medals in Fox, but... He did look a little bit, as Dan said, a little bit slow today, a little bit off of it. Yeah, he's, he's got to get back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. into I swing. thought Emerson, so. Emerson had a good game. Sue Fowl, I couldn't work out if Sue Fowl was up front at um, most points. We said it, didn't we? Like in it. the first Far in forward. The, he, was, he was right yeah. up there. I mean, yeah. Kudus was sort of right back, and Sue Fowl was up top. Yeah. I was thinking, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, a good battle today as well, Sue Fowl. I thought he played well. Oh, yeah, he earned his way. He was a bit hard done by for that yellow card, I thought. Yeah, I thought I saw. I thought mm. that was a bit of a poor poor decision. And obviously, any time, you know, you're a right back and you're going against a good winger like uh, Elagor, he was battling, that's going to it's going to affect you. The thing is, with, that, with our midfield trio, right, of Alvarez, uh, Suchek and Will Prowse, I like that. I like that as, when they're on form, I like that. But the problem is, is what I said, if you can somehow get Paqueta in front of him, it'll work a lot better. When he's out wide drifting, because we said it today and we've said it the last few weeks, when he's not involved in the game, you know he's here. When, he go, when he's not involved, you know, when things are going his way, a bit like Kudus as well, sometimes he sort of drifts in and out of games. Mm. But when they get the ball, you know that they're going to do stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Kudus today, I know he didn't have probably his best game so far, but every time he gets on that ball, and he runs and he takes on one, two, three players. It gets the fans yeah, off the edge of the two or three players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw strength is so drawing. good in terms of keeping hold of the ball, shielding the ball, yeah. holding players you, off. And... You want to draw them fouls because when you've got someone like Will Prowse, who I thought had a good game today, and he, mm. these deliveries were spot on today. Yeah, yeah. And um, when you've got someone like him that can assist and, and put the ball into these sort of players. Mm. But then there was times where I see him looking up and he's looking forward and there's, there's just no one. Yeah, there's no one, come there's no one like around the, the centre-backs. And yeah. that's why sometimes, and I don't know I've criticised him before, but sometimes Antonio, because he, he sits on the centre-backs, mm. it gives them a target. Yeah. And that's one thing that we was lacking today. I think that, you know, listen, uh, Pakistan's a wonderful player, but he's no left winger. I know it's worked. And I know that, you know, he, he's sort of like, he is affecting games out there and he's getting involved. But you see at times, and this is, this is there is no... There is no fluidity to our attack play. It's it's all very laboured. Nothing gets out quick enough. Um, you know. There's, there's do, do you find that switch. when we go on the attack, you can already see what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, so you know. they, so, but they, they, then they can. I think yeah. how many times did we have um, certainly out on the left in the second half? There was opportunities for the for the switch. Well, Emerson was like, he was getting acres out on the left. Oh, they were so, they, 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 I don't. This is the thing about it. We're, we're a very safe team. We like to play it safe hmm. and try and play it around. There's no, no, there's no one there that, uh, there's not, well, not many that want to play that sort of killer, risky, yeah. mm. Hollywood Do you ball, find which that, sometimes that, you need. That comes down to the, the, the form and the players might feel Because if you look at the beginning of the season when we was free flowing and knocking it about and 
enjoying their players look like he's enjoying we was, you know but you know what, I, uh, what I've noticed and, I, and I, I'm, I'm not blaming him at all and I think you know it's obviously a team issue is that since Kudus has come in there's been a uh, a, a lack of understanding would you say like it's, it's like the balance has been knocked off and you know because as I said in the fan camps Moyes is, a, uh, Moyes is a, a creature of habit he knows what he wants he knows what he wants to get out of it and he knows that it, you know this is the way it's working and it was working at the beginning of the season now it, you know Kudus didn't he was coming off the bench after a few games he normally noticed that he, he came on for the same players and the same mm. players left the field and he came on at the same time or got a couple of minutes here and there Obviously, he's he's such a wonderful player that he's got to start, mm. and he's got to you know he's got to obviously uh, sort of get to know his teammates and you know and and. Do you get think it's a bit similar to last season with Paqueta when we were trying to I get him? So. In, yeah, know, and, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Because he's that good, you don't want to leave him out. But and, and we had the same last yeah, season, didn't we? I think um, a lot of these problems, though, I see before Kudus came in, like how how static we are mm. and the lack of movement off the ball, where we we like to cluster. And rather than someone actually moving in space and giving you options, they're sitting there and we, they're standing there going, well, where do I pass to? Yeah. No one's moving into the spaces to give them an option. So we end up, how many times have we got all the way to, to near, right near their goal, whether it's a throw-in or got a ball and have to pass all the way back to the goalkeeper because there's no options because no one's moving? That's because, you know what it comes down to as well? We haven't got an intelligent striker at this football club. Mm. Someone like, I don't know, you know, like a... Um, an Ollie Watkins or someone like that, someone that makes them runs, they know how to make them runs. We haven't got anyone like that at this football club. Antonio's a, a battering man, you know what you're going to get from him. Sure. We have got someone like him 10 years ago, Danny Ings. <laughs> but now we've got old Danny Ings who don't really offer much. So we need to, that's one thing I want us to do in January is to go out and, and I know we've been linked with this um, Louver, Leverkusen striker that Tim Steyer knows very well. and. I think he scored like 15 goals this season so far, something like that. But mm. he could maybe be the missing piece of, piece of this puzzle because... Missing piece. Missing piece. <laughs> yeah, missing piece of this puzzle. Because when I look at our team, I look at that starting eleven. I look at it and on paper, you think, yeah, that's a, that's a great team. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just not, there's something missing. And I think that's what we're missing, that link between the midfield and the striker. I think you've got, yeah. you're missing, like when I see it today, you're missing... Forward intelligence, if that makes sense, right? Especially when you've got Pakatar on out of left. Look, Pakatar's a wonderful player. He's not a left winger. Mm. I, I want him in the middle. You, you want him in the middle, yeah. So he's, he's, he, you know, he should be the focal point in midfield, in my, my opinion. He's put out on the left, let's be honest, to, to squeeze him in as well as other favourites. And um, sometimes when you go on an attack, a left winger knows how to draw someone, a striker then knows how to draw the, the centre backs. Yeah. Mm. We miss that. Like you see it, we go forward. There's this. There's acres of space in front of them, and no one occupying or, or, or running into that space. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and 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 because you've got two, two, you know, two missing. You, one you can get away with two, you can't. Mm. So you've got that sort of. That no one's occupying or drawing the defenders the way you know natural forwards will. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're playing Suchek in that role, in that sort of advanced ten yeah. role, which is weird because. It was Ward Price, like second strike when he yeah, forward that, today. It's, it's so weird because I think Ward Price, we lose so much of him having him so deep because he can create. Well, can create. when you look at the beginning of the season, Ward Price was playing a bit more forward and that's where he was getting his joy with the assist and the goals. Mm -hmm. But now he is being asked, and I don't know why, the last few weeks he's, he's having to play that deeper role because you've got Alvarez and you've got Suchek to yeah. do that. Yeah. Let, let, let James Ward Price, you know, he's not the strongest in midfield, he's not the most skillfulest, but he, he will create. And so if you give him that space, pass. yeah, if you give him that space, is it, I know he's, he's compared a lot to David Beckham, but when you watch mm. David Beckham's game, that's what he used to do, find that space, and the first thing he'd do is hit them balls yeah. into York and Cole, and that's where they got the most success, and that's where we need to do, but then what is he actually aiming for, if we've got no one under Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, they're, they're, you know, I've, we've got the players with the ability to do it, but then when I'm looking up, they've got no one in the occupying spaces. No, yeah. Mm. No, for him to, to you know, it, it, it's just, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's got to be worked on. The thing on. is, like, we went 2 1 down, and um, I'm probably not the only one that was probably fearing the worst that we were going <laughs> to lose today. Mm. But I think to get that Quick goal, response. the equaliser the straight away was the game. best thing because yeah, it lifted that. the crowd, it didn't give the crowd time to get on the players' backs. We got back into the game, and then that was making me laugh. The Forest fans, as they scored, we scored the second goal. They were like, great, it's football. Yeah. Tearing it as they said that. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Quite, no, yeah, I, just, I just was watching Owen's the game. Owen's had such a quiet game today to East standards, but he's got another goal. And, you know, he was there, he's, he's got the equaliser. And then for us to go and win it 3-2, I think it shows a bit of character that we've lacked over the last few weeks, especially in the Premier League, in the Cup. Where it's like you almost want to get a new manager in for the league games and leave Moyes in charge for the cup because he knows how to win the cup games. Yeah, I think it showed how important set pieces are to us because last season we were really poor with I them. I think right? that's a and dangerous we, we, game to play, especially when you've got sorry mate, when you've got defensive frailties like we have. They, yeah. They've been exposed again today, and and then you're relying on set pieces for your goals. Yeah, no, you are, but, but that's the problem. Is last season be, you're on a road we didn't <laughs> score like uh, set pieces. Oh, it, it slashed our goals and half. And today, set pieces, and we were saying, great, weren't we? Like we just, just before, and we went, oh, we just really before, we've we we really really scored set combo. pieces lately, <laughs> and weeks and weeks, and now that's what's won us the game. Yeah. The set piece. And, and Suchek deserved his goal today because he got himself in a couple of positions. He had the crossbar, he had another one that was just tipped over. You you, you had that feeling that Suchek, if anyone was going to get the winner for us, he had, it was going to be Suchek. He had a decent game with that. Yeah, Suchek, and it was, a, it was a great header. Yeah. Great header, and it's he, won us the game. And he comes alive a little bit more towards the end of the game, I find, Suchek. Mm. He, he, is, that's, that's his big thing. And we did talk and went about when that sub came off, got come up, and it was Alvarez instead of Suchek because you thought Suchek at that point didn't do too much. But, like you said, those last minute bits when you're putting them set pieces in or the crosses in, that's why I think off the bench, he is a good option, um, rather than throughout the whole 90 minutes where he can be a bit of a passenger sometimes, yeah. I think. I just I think that it was a, it was a sorry mate, it was, it's just a much needed win today, you know. Yeah. That, 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 that win put us yeah. up to ninth, you know, obviously Chelsea are playing at the moment. So I think we could have been uh, 16th. 16th. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing, I mean, we when you look at the bottom of that table, right. there's a gap between the bottom three or bottom four between us, but... You don't want to be down that end of the table. This is me, me and Scott were saying on Friday, like someone said, like, are we in a relegation battle? Not yet, but we lose another, like if we'd have lost today and then maybe a, another one after that, then you're getting sucked into it. Yeah, of course. And, we, and we've got some difficult games coming up over the next month. And obviously we've got Europe, the League Cup, mm. you know, so it was important to get this win today, gain into the international break. Now the players get a break because mm. the last international break, we, we was flying going into that, and yeah. then since then, and this it's just break, it's just gone. Yeah. Hopefully, we come out of this yeah. one. Like, Hopefully, we can find that little bit of form that you know gets us back in the mix of trying to battle to break into that top eight, top seven. Because um, I said to you the other day, still the potential to be a good season. We're in the quarterfinals of the League Cup. We're doing well in Europe. Yeah, we're still top half of the table. Yeah, we're, we're in. The, we're now we're back up to ninth. We've had a bad run of form. Let's hope now that if we can yeah. get a little run together. Because there's a lot of football to play over, uh, over Christmas and a lot of teams are going to drop points over Christmas and it's a, it's a just, tough period. You know, I have to give Moyes a bit of credit because uh, he, he's going to get some criticism. We're going to talk about Moyes. But what I like today is he's showing that he is looking, learning, trying to change things. He didn't just go and stick Antonio you know, no. to start with and then do the Ings coming off. Even though he, he's took a bit too long, in my opinion, to realise that. He is trying to do yeah, something. Yeah, because that Antonio yeah. sub could have come about 15 minutes earlier. Yeah, that did come a bit late. But he, no, but I'm, what I'm saying is, yeah. it was obviously we've won the game, so it looks like it's a good good decision. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't panic and just put Antonio oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's left it. He's, he's gone for what he thought could win us the game today. Um, he's at least made changes with that starting lineup. Yeah. Not gone. I know how I like to play. I, I know mean, Antonio fits. He's obviously start, bothered yeah. them at half time because they was out three minutes earlier in Nottingham Forest. Mm. You know, and you can tell on the touchline that he wasn't happy. He was very animated today. You know, and he's the one that comes under pressure, under criticism because his job's on the line. Yeah, so exactly. you think that's the pressure getting to him? I don't. I wouldn't say. I think he's been under a lot more pressure with us. Yeah, look, we've been in yeah. worse, a lot worse situations yeah, yeah. in this, yeah. this well, I've tenure. Got, <clears throat> Listen, I'm, I'm not convinced with him. I'm not convinced with his tactics, right? But I was thinking about this today. Why, why have I got such an attachment to David Moyes? And why, you know, you, listen, I'm not going to name him, but there's, there's certain big accounts out there that, look, That's it. Won't, won't hear a good word about him. And they, you know, it's not everything's David Moyes' fault. But I think you've got to sit back and remember where we were before. And I don't, I don't believe he's our best tactical manager. But you have got to think to yourself about the stabilisation he's brought mm. to the club. Yeah, history don't lie. I mean, you look at, I know it ain't, hasn't been pretty. I mean, take away, we finished 14th last season in the Premier League, but we won a trophy. But before that, six, seven, highest ever Premier League points, goals. 
So he has got the best out of a lot of players as well. Mm. You know, I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. And, and listen, I know I always sort of, I back any manager, but there's been times I haven't been entertained. But I wasn't entertained today. No, I wasn't entertained today. And I haven't been entertained for a long time. So something's got to change there. But you're right what you say. Ever since we've come to this stadium, all we've wanted is stability in this football club. And three years in a row, we've been in Europe. And three years in a row, touch wood, they would, but we'll touch that. There you go. It looks like we might win the group again and go through to the next stage in the Europa League, which is it's something that we've always wanted to do. And the, the, the European Knights mm. are, are great for this football club. And, and it's them Knights and why we're in Europe, why we've got Alvarez, Kudus, Paqueta, yeah. players like that at our football club. No, Do you know what if you just said a few years ago, like we're gonna get we're gonna be in Europe three years running, we're gonna get to the semi final, we're gonna win one. Looks like we're gonna get to the knockout stages again. Mm. Yeah. Right, you you need about people's arms off. But I do that. understand oh, sorry Dan, just yeah. quickly, I do understand people's frustration with yeah. always because even though pe- people think, Oh, I'm a Moist fanboy, I'm not. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a West Ham fan and I want Moist to do well because Club West Club. Ham do well and we're all happy. But I'm not happy with the way he approaches games sometimes. But mm. for him, all he's worried about is results. He don't care about style. No. He's worried about results. Where we as fans yeah. want to see. But that style has to get results. results. That, yeah, yeah. And that is the big thing is when this style ain't getting results, you are going to exactly. be under pressure. And the thing is with Moyes, and whenever I look and go, do you know what? I want to change or end the season. I don't think you should get a new contract. I do want to change. It doesn't. I do want to yeah. change. Yeah. But the reason, but, but for me, I think people, some people who are Moyes, the big boys fans see that as you knocking the job that he's done it. No, no, I'm no. not. If, if I say, you know, I think we can go in a different direction, I will take nothing away. If Moyes leaves today, if left tomorrow, we had went on a shit run and he got the sack. You could objectively say he had a very good yeah. time at West Ham. But for me, I look at it and go, we've got some really quality, talented players here. And what I don't want is to go through a shit period where you could say he's potentially earned a shit period, but I don't want to go through a shit period and then we lose those players because for them, they're like, well, where's the project? What yeah. is the project? Why am I staying here? Mm. We've we've really got to keep this project going and building and keeping these players. I think that David Moyes will see out of the season. I think they won't renew his contract. Um, and I think I, I actually do like the idea of David Moyes staying at the football club and, and but, rumoured but, to be but, moving but upstairs. Because that? that's the thing, when that came out, him moving upstairs, I thought, what? Like, so does it, it, I, I mean, think it might be bollocks. Yeah, it could be bollocks, could but, be, he, but you know, he if, if he's if he's Not transfers. Here, yeah, no, not transfers, definitely not transfers. <laughs> but maybe he could work behind the scenes or, or whatever. But I like uh, like the... Ambassador? He, he might be a good coach. He yeah, might be not, not only that. He ain't going to take a coaching. Bro. It's not only that. He could be a sort of good... Good person if we got a younger manager to come in. What, Someone what, that's not what, experienced. what role yeah, did Ferguson take when he left Man United? Well, I mean, I, mean, I know it's different. He, he, he chose but... David Moyes to be his the yeah. next manager. Was, and he's he's like him, um, was it like I'd put him on the board or something? Yeah. He, he had a lot of influence on the program. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. been that man. Uh, nah, but look, I think, I think unless anything drastic happens where we lose our next 10 in a row, I think. David Moyes will be here to the end of the season. Yeah. And and if I was David Moyes, if you looked at your time since you come back to the club the second time and when he left it, has he left it in a much better position? Of course he has, because we've got a trophy. And he can look back at them seasons where we finished sixth, seventh, record Premier League points, goals, and he can be proud of that. But it is about now. We just need something to... We can't carry on like that because we got lucky today. We, we was lucky today. But... I'd rather take a lucky win and then well, lose. To so be honest, the day we just needed to win. We need to stop that, yes. the rot. Because now we go into the international break, and I said it last week, two wins this week, and we go into the international break feeling a little bit I more... Do, I, I do agree with you, but, but I'm going to put this as a, as a, a sort of a, a, a cross against the football. Yeah. Like, there is still... like You've got to see improvement in the areas that we're not, we're not oh, doing. Oh, 100%. And we're not. No. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We're not. We're not seeing it. Listen, over the last few weeks, the Brentford game and all that, goals have been coming from individual brilliance. Conceding too many. And we're conceding too many stupid and easy goals, giving away too many easy chances. And I don't feel like he's he's he's. Um, Do you know what it is? He's addressing that, to be honest. It's and like you go go up, and you know which you're not going to. But I'm I'm yeah. telling you now, right? That this team has got quality in it, and I think with the right puppet master. 
I think we could. We, this team could do something special. Mm. The thing that I'm worried about well, and this season. <clears throat> Going forward, going forward, I think. But right, you know, next season, maybe, yeah. Well, well uh, it, uh, if we had the right manager, yeah, no, no, no yeah, that's what I'm saying. And the I'm right and the right sort of philosophy to games, and someone that can get that that sort of balance right and and get his plans. Because there's there's quality in this team. We could, like, I was saying a couple of weeks ago, you know, Bowen, what's that? Like nine goals, nine goals, nine, nine, nine goals this season. season. Yeah, and like for for for, for, for we ain't had a forward to score nine goals. Uh, in a season, I don't think. Like a centre forward. <laughs> yeah, we had told you. What nine goal league goals? Yeah, yeah. He's he's got double yeah. figures. But, but even yeah. st- but even still, we're nine goals, ten games in this stage uh, of the season. Yeah, yeah, goals. yeah. And, yeah. Um, which is yeah, huge. But but I'm just I'm saying, like for. there is there is goals in this side. There's quality in this side. And if we've got a, if if uh, you heard, uh, I said this the other week. You heard Alvarez say, you know, he, he he's attracted this Kudos and Alvarez. Because he said we want you to be part of the project. Yeah, Steinson, so, 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 so Steinson, that. yeah. So we've got there, there's a project there. He's Moyes, the manager for the project. I'm not convinced it no, is. That's why I think at but the end of the w- season they will go. And, uh, but, I said it on the other day. Yeah. I think there's, they've already identified yeah. who they want. But if they, they if they've got someone in mind, and this is the God's honest truth, like the only, the thing that I'm worried about is that the style we're playing now, the, the likes of Pakatar and Kudos are not going to be convinced by that. And I think when you look at Pakatar now, yeah, he was gone. That betting that thing and and but gone if they're on. brought into the project, do they not see? They're not just looking at this season. No, they're no, they're, they're not. Yeah. But they might are, be thinking we get the, into the, the summer. likes of Pakatar. So if we go and get a, a a manager that plays progressive football and really gets hold of this team, mm. like Pakatar, let's let's not fucking kid ourselves. At the end of the season, he's got a clause in his contract. Man City was sniffing around him. If he hadn't got caught in that scandal mm. or that betting thing, he'd have been gone. It'll have been a Manchester City plan now, right? They'll come back for him next year, mm. without a shadow of a doubt. And he's got a clause in his contract saying that we can't oppose it, right? So why but not? They're working on a new contract now. I, 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 do you know that what? I, I hope, I hope that yeah. he signs it. He but needs to see something. But if you, yeah, if, if, if you, start. if you can get that manager that we've got it now, it might not be that easy. But I'm just saying, like, show them what the future is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Show it them, be. or what it could be. Yeah, show them the manager. And like, let them work with a manager before they make a decision in the summer. To we need work we need with him and see what he place. can do because he could convince them players to stay. That's we need someone in place or someone that has agreed to join this football club before the end of the season. A bit like when Ferguson retired and he said that Moyes was taking over. Do you know, so then players know who's coming in. So that manager will come in and he's already working behind the scenes. He knows what players he's identifying because I think that. As you said, the players we've got here, you know, you put a, a, an attacking manager, someone who likes to play attacking football in charge of them, you know, I think we knew, we, we do need to shore up the defence a bit because we do concede too many goals. Ariola, I'll be honest, I love Ariola. I'm not 100% convinced with him. Don't control, control he, I don't think he controls his box as well. It's a shame that you can't mix him and Fabianski together because Ariola's shots stops are, are unreal. You see that save you pull off day. Mm. I'll stick with him because I think that he's the younger goalkeeper and he needs time to... Because Fabianski made, has made loads of mistakes in the West Ham. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think that if we can just sort out that back four, I don't know, you know, I like the look of Marvin Panos. <laughs> and sometimes I think to myself, Maybe, I don't know who you would drop though, but maybe sometimes, maybe drop to a back three. Zuma, Gwerd, Marapanos, Emerson left wing back, Sufa right wing we back. Was, we were switching to it and today. Then, but you've got, the only person, uh, people that I would choose to drop is you've got either take one out of Alvarez, Walprass and Suchek. Now for me, the easy option would probably be, everyone would say Suchek. But sometimes I think Suchek, well, I like having way. him there because... He does do moments like that where he'll yeah. pop up. He's a that's why, that's that's why I the opposition. think he's good off the bench. That's Area. why I think when you are trying to chase that winner and you are trying to teams maybe sitting back a bit, bring him on but and then go direct. You know, he's a, in, in the opposition area. He's he's an aerial threat. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. He's so, good in our box. He's good in their yeah, box. But that's what I'm saying. So you're more likely towards the end is when you are going to get more aerial opportunities, mm. right, when you are chasing that last goal. So him coming on, I think... It's a bit like the Antonio sub today because I bet they're not in Forest defenders were sitting there thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, son. exactly. Now he's going to run 70th minute and now you've got someone that wants to come on. And this is what I wanted from Antonio. And this is why 
a few weeks ago, I said that maybe he needs to be dropped because I want Antonio to get that fire back in his belly that when he comes on, yeah, that desire. he's got to prove that, no, I need to be starting because we know there's a good player in Antonio. He's just the most frustrating player at his football club. That's the... Danny Ings, I don't even... Like, I looked at that sub bench today and Mabama's not on there again and, and, and Danny Ings is there and I'm just thinking to myself, no wonder the boy wants to go. And I don't blame him. He, yeah. He's probably already being tapped up by someone. Yeah, the Danny the boy Ings needs a chance. Danny Ings needs to go in January. What we need to do is release Danny Ings in January. We need to bring a new striker in, and we need Nubama to be pressing them. Do you know what annoys me? There are so many people when it comes to Ings. Go, but Ings is prem proven. He scored goals everywhere yeah, ten, he's gone. Five, ten years. He scored ago. two goals in a West Ham shirt. Richard Ravanelli's prem proven. You wouldn't be my yeah. friend, would you? How can you keep justifying bringing him on? Over, over Mubama because he scored goals in, for yeah. other clubs. You see, you see, you see it the other night when Mubama came on against Olympiacos. The first, he was only on for five minutes. He's done more running and tracking than what Ings has done. And I, and yeah. I don't want to criticise Danny Ings too much because I know that people say we don't play to his system. But well, if it had been one or two games or three games, I can't say it, but he's had like 22 games yeah. and he's not offering nothing. He's had chances where he started as mm. well. He's not offering nothing. He's so against Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for Mubama, it must be frustrating for him because that boy must have thought he had the world at his feet last season. <clears throat> Yeah. Playing in Europe, won a trophy, you know, thinking, oh, this season, pre-season, yeah, I'm going to get me a down. Moyes told him he didn't want to go out alone. He's probably thinking, I'm going to get more game time, and he's not getting it, and I feel sorry for him. And, and there's, a, there's a few youngsters that deserve a lot more. Well, apparently yeah. Moyes has said to him, if you sign a new deal, I'll send you out on loan, which is like... Well, he he wants to play but do you know what? I would, I, I would be for that. If he signed a new deal, and we got a couple of, we got a striker in in January, and they send Mbamba down to the Championship, I'd take that, because... He'll go down there, he'll score plenty of goals, so, and then next season he'll come it's back. It's a bit of a piss take, though, isn't it? It's like, well, before you're saying, I'm not going to send you out on loan, we're going to have chances for you this season. Mm. Then you're going to go, oh, well, if you sign a new deal, now I'm going to send you out on loan because you're not getting any this chances. This is the problem with our manager, and I think this is why a lot more is frustrates a lot of the fan base, is that he has a select 15 players that he'll just use. He's starting 11 and the odd subs, and that's the close group that he'll work with. Mm. And unless someone gets injured or suspended, then he has to bring someone in that ain't going to get a chance. They're just there to fill the bench. Mm. And that is the problem. And I do understand that frustration with yeah. David Moyes sometimes. And the thing is, I've seen a lot of people go, well, what about Ngaki and what about Perkins, right? So say Mubama ends up being another Ngaki, another Perkins who don't go to kick on. By giving him more chances, because let's be honest, Ings is doing nothing. He could do the same as Ings. Nothing. Nothing. But... He's now a youngster who has more Premier League experience. His value increases because he's he's Premier League. He's got the Premier League experience. So then, at least if he's not good enough for West Ham, you can sell him at a higher premium rather than some. I want to sell him if he don't sign a contract. He's getting he's No, no but what I'm saying is he would sign a contract if he played mm. more games. I think it's it's a problem. We've got a, we've, listen. We've got a good group of youngsters here. Oh, so and we night. was listening to when we were in the, yeah. the other night. We were just three to, players down there. That, that could go in the first the team yeah, yeah. now, and there's about mm. four, four or five more mm. that would be pushing, and none of them are getting Do you know chances. why they don't get chances at, at clubs like West Ham? Because, because it's, it's pressure. so pressured. Yeah. Like, at Man City, they can, they can bring to, a couple yeah, of these I understand. Passes, but at West Ham and, and clubs like that, back in the early 90s under Redknapp, you know, he'd, he'd chuck Joe Cole, Carrick, Defoe, all them players in because we were sort of, we had that mixture of experience as well. And we were we was bobbing always, in the middle and there's no yeah, expectation. But this, like for someone like David Moyes, if he goes with the youth and, and we start losing games, you know, he's always going to come out and say, well, that's what the We're, fans we're in danger. Yeah, then, we're, we've lost people, as you say, like Sonny Perkins yeah. and Gakia. Who was the other kid that went, uh, the right back, Harrison Ashby? Ashby. Um, I look at them. And they've done nothing. No, I know. I, know. So, I, know. Ashby, I do understand. To be fair, they've put him on loan and they... Obviously, Trippy is there, so we can't write off... No, I, I, I understand. But what I'm saying is, is that with this group, good group of youngsters, we're in real danger of losing them because they don't feel like this is the club that can progress and which then affects it in the future. If you've got a group of youngsters that good and not one of them gets a regular spot in yeah. the first team or gets picked for the first team, yeah. gets on a bench and all that, going forward, our youth will think... Well, don't go to West Ham, because no matter how fucking good you are, you never yeah. no, no one's yeah. saying that. No one's asking for our youngsters to start in the Prem week in week. No, out. all we're talking about is getting a chance, last 10 minutes, whatever, 15 minutes. More than two. <laughs> yeah, give give some, you know, time then, and let them get... But the that's why you need to get the first team right, so we're comfortable enough to bring these players on. 
Because yeah, but, 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 but sometimes you need to find a hero, man. At, at that Brentford game, right? What would have, if I think if you brought Mabama on instead of Ings? Ings had five touches in thirty minutes. Listen, I'm all what for Mabama. Been... I love Mabama, oh. and, and I've fucking been championing it. I, I want him to play. I want him to yeah. start. I think he's good enough to start. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So what? What would have been the harm? Not maybe not in the Premier League, but in Europe. Like yeah. last week when we played Olympiacos, yeah, I was expecting to see his name on the team sheet, mm. but. I think you know what I like would that back the thing about him is time, he might not have the experience but he's a natural forward centre yeah. forward who's got natural centre forward instincts who's got natural centre forward goal scorer he may not come in and, and start scoring goals like uh, Erling Haaland mm. yeah I'm not saying he's got to do that but what he will do is occupy defenders in a centre forward mm. way yeah. do you yeah. know what I mean you know, he's raw he's raw he's, he, and he's excited to be playing you look at Wayne Rooney, when he first started, what he was like, they chucked a 16-year-old. And do you know what? That surprised me because it was David Moyes that chucked Rooney in. Yeah, yeah. Mm, so yeah. why not give a 17, 18-year-old yeah, yeah, one? Yeah. He scored yeah. that goal. But the thing is, I look at it and people go, oh, well, this player's, you know, they're probably not good enough or they're not good enough for this or, or Ngaki weren't good enough, so he's probably not good enough. It's like, where, where do we put some onus on coaching? Where do we look to the coaches to then improve players and then go, right, we're going to give you some experience playing against Premier League defences and then we're going to take that and we're going to... This is why, and I you. think, and, and this is why the likes of... You look at the, the youngsters that have come through over the years, like the Joe Coles and all that, because back in the day, you used to play reserve football yeah. and you would play against Premier League players, first-team players that would come back. Now, the under-23s, it's, it's, for me... Like, that's, that's the worst thing they've ever done, scrapping yeah, reserve it's, football. It's, it's, it's pointless. The worst thing they did. It's pointless because they're beating teams week in, week out, four or five nil. But then, and they're not a team but they're not the team players. Play. But I remember going to Upton Park as a kid and, and watching, like, you'd say, like, West Ham are playing Liverpool. And you look at that Liverpool team and they'll have, like, Barnes, Ruddock, all them sort of mm. players that were coming back from injury. Hey. And that's, or not that's getting in the first. I don't know how much West Ham is. It's like, you might have... You know, like Billy Bonds and Fred come back from injury. I remember, and then the opposition... I remember like, they having an after game once and Henri was yeah. in the side. Mate, or I remember the going to a West Ham reserve game and Peter Shilwell was in goal for us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yes. no, I think I do. I do understand that as well because the under twenty three league. Listen, I know it's competitive for the kids in there, but you're playing against other kids. You're playing against other kids. There's no I'm... experience. There's no, you know, that even like when you get uh, in a reserve team football, like you'll have a player from us come in against injury, and he'd be able to stand in the in the uh, changing room. He'll play. He'll give him a bit of advice. Yeah. He'd be able to talk to him. Can you imagine being uh, like a kid come playing for the like, oh, right, you were the reserves tonight? And you Ashton there, there or Thierry Henry's playing in the opposition. Yeah, yeah. Playing against Thierry Henry. That's yeah. what I like yeah. about yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Against That's what I do like about the EFL Cup is that the our under twenty threes play against like League One and League Two teams because that. And, yeah. and, but our under twenty threes are, are doing well in that, so they yeah. they proved that they can play against these professional players. It's just not enough. It's not enough, players, no. So. And 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 that's why like I wish that Moisey would give because. Yes. Out of that group, I know we've got a great group that won the cup last year, and there's probably like a good 18, 20 players there. Maybe one or two of them will go on and have a top career. That's mm -hmm. that's just that's just the nature. That's the statistics. Yeah. 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 But when you look at Callum Marshall, Mabama, Skulls. Skulls, there's there's a lot of players down there. There's probably about five or six that we could pick out that you could think, yeah, they could do well with. But look, look how, look how proud right. that Dallas in the uh, Europa League that year. Mm. Let's be honest, right? When you look at the bench. Yeah, when you look at our bench and you see the players on the bench, right? Would it be any different if we have got skulls on the bench instead of Cresswell? No. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, would it be any Mabama different? Mabama Frings. Mabama Frings. Yeah. Like, why? Would, and I said this at the beginning of the season. Like, some of sometimes it's too sentimental, and they think about what they've done for. So Cresswell should have been out the fucking door. Mm. He wanted to go to Wolves anyway. Went on strike. Yeah, yeah. Sling him off. Yeah. Sling him off to walls. They should, in fact, they should have just told him to get him go to walls for nothing. Sling him off the walls. No, no, I'm just saying. No, but I'm, I'm just saying. Like, what is the point? You know, when Cresswell, he's played one game in the what in the cup. One game when um, I think I think he, I think he'll probably go in January. Good, mm. good. I wanted him to go. Well, I would say good. He's been a good servant. He's been for a good us. servant. And, right, but, but you're right. It's, it's the move time. him on. It's the right time. and and up up up. Bring one there's of the years. Too, you know, well, there's too many players <coughs> that we that we that we. Resign and, and yeah. give extensions of contracts. That it's just because it's job for the board. Zabaleta was one. Mm. Zabaleta was a good player. Was a good servant. He had one season too many. Ogbonna, big injury. Had an extension last season. Had his last season. He should have been 
sort of sock button though. I know, man, but it, no, but this is what I'm saying. It's sock, and, that, and that is that is no, what that is what's holding back. Eight, there's eight positions on that bench. You can only make five subs. No, 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 I'm coat. sorry, mate. Give I'm him sorry, a, but give him a bench this, coat. Here. It's but, like Bonner. You know, this, this is the, this, this is what you have to do to be a top tier football club. I think Bonner's last season. I think Criswell's definitely last season. I think no, I they should, but, but I'm just saying, they, they should, be they should have been gone January, now. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. should have been gone now. Cresswell coming on today and sitting on the bench, he's nicking Skulls' what could be the future of this left back position. That, that's position. So, he come on at like, well, he was uh, in the 97th minute. Yeah, yeah. That's just, just a waste time in here and break. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, so, the, so, I'm so I'm so sorry. But we just give these players too much fucking. Like, yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't give him respect, but I'm just saying, like, it's not Sen- a fucking... Sentimentality. Sen- Sen- too much sentimentality, yeah. On yeah. Bonner, he had that injury. They like, gave him the contract extension when Charles Bladoff. That's the time... He's 35 years old. Yeah. That's the time, then, to I say, right... Well, thank you. Calm down. But you know what? That's <laughs> like a lot like <laughs> chocolate. With Moyes, last thing I said, I'm Bonner said this then, by the way. Thank you, Bonner. With Moyes, means I look at it, you don't always have to get rid of a manager when you're in fucking crisis mode and you're in a relegation battle. You look at it, sometimes it's forward thinking and going, do you know what? We This manager has got us in a stable position. Mm. This is the best time to make the change rather than sit there and go he hasn't really done anything deserved to be sacked he, we're not in danger yeah, it doesn't have to be in yeah in why wait yeah why I think wait it's clear to see that he's, everyone can see it, whether you're Moisey or Moisey he's taking us as far as he can go he'll, he'll stay with us this season we won't go down we'll be a sort of I don't want to be that now about where we are but do you know what if you said to me now we're going to finish 12th mid-table but we won the league cup I'll take but, it oh, of course, but, but what, I would, what I would say Ray is this Look at what, like, I don't think we're going to win that cup, that European cup. Uh, Mate, it's tougher than last time. Was yeah, it's a lot tougher. tougher I don't think we'll win the Carabao Cup either. I think if, if, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Too. Well, even if we beat Liverpool. If, if we beat Liverpool, Liverpool, I fancy us. But I don't think... If we beat Liverpool, we'd be... Uh, yeah, be I, don't, the I, don't, I do not fancy us against Liverpool just because of our record. Why well, though? Because of our record, it depends yeah, what yeah, team they put out. They've got. We're going to go full strength, most probably, and they're going to play a very weak team. And I know we ain't got okay. a great record. Yeah. No, no. That, I mean, that, that goes in our, in our favour. But I'm just saying, like, time. it's a tough game. It's a tough game, right? So if you now wait to the end of the season <laughs> to let him to let him <laughs> ride off into the sunset, we lose to Paul Bauer. This right. 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 No, but I'm just saying, we won't be in Europe. It's true, yeah. We won't be in Europe, and then what? You know what I mean? Like, you look at what Aston Villa done. Aston Villa. When they took over, we was in a relegation squad. That's below us. Yeah. And he got them stabilised, playing good football. Same team, mm. same players, yeah. different philosophies, which then shot them up the table. They're a good side now. Yeah. They're a really good side. Yeah. Um, shot them up the table. They're playing Conference League. Don't leave it too late. No. Don't leave it too late. If you've got a look at, look at Villa and I look at us... And I said this when, when we lost 4-1 to them. The only difference with us and them that day is they had a striker. They had a goal scorer. Well, the coach has got something to do with it. No, yeah, but when you look at us that day, we could have won that game, but we didn't. We ended up losing 4-1. But it was a difference between having a striker and us not having nothing up front. You know Emery's a great coach. You know, I think he was treated harsh at Arsenal. I think mm. he was, you know, what he's done in Europe, and they'll probably go on and win the Conference League this year because he knows how to win. I'm not sure. European about that. football good teams in that, man. Yeah, but they're one of the best teams in it. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, not many teams in Claro and Blue beat out. Well, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, look, I think they're, they're doing great, and it's a, it's a great it's a great uh, experience for their fans. But the Europa League, like, Fucking. it's a tough, it is a tough, a it is tough, <laughs> but that's where we want to be, you know? Yeah. Newcastle didn't get to the Champions League and think, oh, this is going to be tough. They knew it was going to be tough, but they have them big nights. Whether they're going to win it, I don't think so. I don't yeah, think they're going to win it. They're, they're probably end up in Europa with us. Yeah. But you can't knock it being in them bigger competitions. Yeah. Anyway, free I'm to win. Saying, like, days. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, but, they're, they're, you know, you and I, Emery, is the... It is the evidence and the documentation that you need to show just what bringing in a coach can do to the players that you've yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. And we probably could have got it to United. Yeah, we, we definitely could have got him. Moyes was... It was hard to set Moyes. Of course it was hard to set Moyes, and he probably didn't... You know, it, I don't yeah. know. I can't remember where Emery... What, what point he came into the season, but we could have probably he got him. just after. We beat... Um, 
we yeah. beat them there in it October. Like, for you coming around October time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it was just before season, the World Cup because yeah. I wouldn't have sat more before the World Cup, but they had the perfect opportunity to do that. But I'm just saying, like, it don't have to be you and I, but I'm just show, it just shows you what different philosophies can do yeah. to players and what what Stein what you know. should be looking now I, so I think they've I already think got someone yeah, yeah. identified someone who they want yeah, and I, is, I'm not fancying Graham Potter personally I, I don't think he'll be Graham no, no, I, no, think, no. I think if we're going to go anything I think he'll be down the foreign route yeah, yeah. Fine well, don't get him go and get him go and pay for it Sullivan for fuck's sake just do something with your money he is. But, He's paying for that bird to be on his boat. Yeah. <laughs> Why he... Paying for it to wag a little tits about. I don't know. He's like, he's going to watch. But... <laughs> I thought he was going to say something else then. He probably was. It's a family show. Yeah, I wouldn't pay to say that. <laughs> Sullivan Gamble. Go on, Dan. What are you saying? No, 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 no. I was like, no, that's... Oh, I thought you was going there. No, no, well, much else to say, isn't it? That's it? really... No, well, we won three, Tim. Is yeah, there, is there anything matters. else? All I will say oh, is... Man, calm down. Six points. At least four points from the next two. Burnley and Palace. Well, at least four I points. I said this down there. Except Burnley away. Burnley That's ain't won our season. He, Nick, had a great and time. And West Ham. Cherry FC, West Ham turn up. Yeah. We, that one we got with Palace. you got uh, Burnley, wouldn't. Palace, Spurs. Spurs and then Fulham. They're on a wobble. Spurs but yeah, well, Spurs, their injuries, they've got us horrendous the amount of injuries. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. So you look at that. Brilliant. You look at Burnley, Palace, injured, injury-laden Spurs away, then Fulham. Fulham. There's, there's but, some serious problems. Yeah. We thought that about it's fucking got, It's got now. to be better. Yes. Better than that. Yeah. We won't get enough. With the thing is, like if you play bad and win, you can accept it. But when you're playing bad week after week, it's tough to accept it. Yeah. So it's something needs it's to change. And hopefully when we come back from this international yes. break... It might be the rest that some of these players need, and we can go again. And hopefully, if we if we get a good result at Burnley, I think that'll that'll set us well for the rest of the yes. month. Merry Christmas, Amen. God bless. Us Amen. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Uh, is that it then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so we've yeah. probably been going about an hour or so. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on this edition of West Ham Fan TV's post-match pint. There is a new Kudus T-shirt in the store. You can go and check that out right now. Link is in the description down below. Um, we'll put a picture of that up on the edit. Yeah, yeah. Like, send me it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll put a picture of that on the edit. It'll be overlaid now. So go and, if you want to catch one of them, check it in the link in the description down below. Uh, subscribe, give us thumbs up, it helps us with the algorithm. Uh, anything else? Don't oh, click off now, they're all clicking off. So Don't click off. Click. Yeah, wait till the end of the video. But, um, click off, thumbs up. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one thing left to say. Come on, guys.